Turns out that the CEO of Moderna, Stefan Bancel, became a billionaire overnight. In what is my favorite story of the week and will likely end up being my favorite story of the month, independent Senator Bernie Sanders has scared Moderna CEO Stefan Bancel into reversing a planned price hike on the COVID-19 vaccine. So in this video, I will get to a bit of Bernie's speech in the Senate, show you what he said. I'll get to Moderna's reaction, and I'll also get to some incredible facts about big pharma and just the amount of corruption and greed that is going on. So first here, this headline, The Hill, one of many places to cover this story, Sanders to grill Moderna CEO over proposed COVID vaccine price hike. The Washington Post here writing in an interview, Sanders said that Moderna, whose only federally approved drug is the coronavirus vaccine, that the company received nearly $2 billion in direct federal money to develop, is a, quote, poster child for the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. He plans to argue that CEO Stefan Bancel, who Forbes estimates is worth more than $5 billion, and several other uh, Moderna executives profited off the pandemic. We're going to ask them, hey, you made it billions of dollars in profit on a vaccine that was developed because of taxpayer support from the National Institutes of Health. You become a multi-billionaire and you think it's appropriate to cost the federal government even more money by quadrupling prices, Sanders said. And I hope, I really do hope, that these people will reconsider this outrageous decision and decide not to raise prices for the vaccine. Bensell told the Wall Street Journal last month he was considering quadrupling the price of Moderna's vaccine to as much as $130 per dose once the federal government drains its stockpile and insures and individuals are responsible for purchasing them on their own. Since the start of the pandemic, the federal government has purchased vaccines and provided them free, and Moderna sold its booster shots to the government for about $25 per dose. So this is one of many examples of taxpayers funding the research into medicine only for that to then be taken by a private corporation and then sold at an insane cost. Bernie Sanders here directly calling out the greed in this specific case, and it led to some actual results. So let me get to a bit of his speech here in the Senate. This is where he specifically targets Moderna. After the company received billions of dollars from the federal government to research, develop, and distribute the COVID vaccine, well, guess what happened? Turns out that the CEO of Moderna, Stefan Bancel, became a billionaire overnight and is now worth $5.7 billion. Further, the two co-founders of Moderna, Nubar Afayan and Robert Langer, also became billionaires and are now both worth $2 billion each. And one of the founding investors in Moderna, Tim Springer, is worth $2.5 billion. None of them were billionaires before the taxpayers of our country funded the research and development for the COVID-19 vaccine. And collectively, these handful of people at Moderna are now worth over $11 billion. And meanwhile, Moderna as a whole made over $19 billion in profits during the pandemic. Given that reality, given the enormous amount of taxpayer support, how has the CEO of this country thanked the taxpayers of America for the huge profits that Moderna has experienced and for the incredible wealth that he and his other executives have experienced? Well, he is thanking them by proposing to quadruple the price of the COVID vaccine to about $130 once the government stockpile runs out. And let us be clear, by the way, this is a vaccine that costs just $2.85 to manufacture. Madam President, on March 22nd, the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pension Committee will be holding a hearing to discuss this subject. And bottom line that we will be discussing, does Moderna think that it is appropriate 
to quadruple prices for the vaccine after receiving billions of dollars in taxpayer support. All right. So I'm going to show you what uh, Moderna's reaction is in a second here. But I just got to quickly point out, there is a Bernie made one little slip up in his speech there where he said the CEO of this country, when he meant to say company, um, <laughs> it's a, it's a, uh, a mistake with some real truth behind it, as clearly massive corporations are what run the country. And I'll get to, again, some absolutely insane and eye-opening facts about Big Pharma and Congress in a bit here. First, I want to get to Moderna's reaction. This from Daily Beast, their headline, Moderna drops 400% Vax price hike after Bernie promised to grill the CEO. This, this just on its own is incredible, but also makes me once again imagine what a President Bernie Sanders would have been like. This is the power of Bernie just through his words. Imagine him with some actual executive power. You all missed out. You had an opportunity. And I'm sure most of you watching this, if you had the opportunity to vote for Bernie in a primary, in the primary, you did. But for the rest of you, uh, you really missed a real opportunity here to have someone who actually cares. And as I've covered in the past on Bernie, his decades long history, going back to the 70s of fighting for people, of saying the same thing, banging this drum, and very few people listening until his first run uh, for president in 2016. But let me get to the larger response here from Moderna. So this is off their page. They write, as the public health emergency ends, the U.S. government will no longer be providing vaccines at no cost. Moderna remains committed to ensuring that people in the U.S. will have access to our COVID-19 vaccines regardless of ability to pay. Moderna's COVID-19 vaccines will continue to be available at no cost for insured people whether they receive them at their doctor's offices or local pharmacies. For uninsured or underinsured people, Moderna's patient assistance program will provide COVID-19 vaccines at no cost. Everyone in the U.S. will have access to Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine regardless of their ability to pay. And they point out here that the uh, their assistance program, patient assistance program, is available after the expiry of COVID-19 public health emergency on May 11th, 2023. So they're extending that past the... Uh, the end of the the emergency. So good, good stuff. Now, the only gap here that I, I don't know, I don't think it has been addressed is what are they going to be charging Medicare? So what are they going to be charging the government to uh, buy the vaccine? Is that also going to be the same cost as it was before? Or are they going also, or are they going to hike that because they can hide that better? Because it isn't a being directly impacted by people um, on private insurance. I don't know, but that's uh, you know a question that may come up in the future, and I still I still believe the CEO is going to be um, answering questions. So I am very much looking forward to how all that plays out. Now, Bernie, of course, generally has had a larger message about pharmaceutical greed. Here is a, a tweet he put out on the eighth saying, here's something you won't hear about in the mainstream media. We are not that divided as a country. Whether you are progressive, conservative, or independent, you're sick and tired of getting ripped off and paying the highest prices on the planet for prescription drugs. So, you know, as a Canadian, I am very aware of this. Uh, the cost of our pharmaceuticals is nowhere near what it is in the U.S. When I've had to buy a drug for whatever reason, it's never been an issue. It's, you know, at, I think at the most I've paid like 20 bucks. Now I'm, a, you know, a unique case. I don't need insulin or any more expensive drugs. There still is an issue with people being able to afford drugs in this country, even though it is one tenth the cost in most cases, but still compared to the U S I mean, it's not even close. And you can see other, uh, prescription drugs and the comparisons here between the U S Canada and the UK. It is just wildly out of sync. Now, before I end, there is a, I'll get to these big pharma facts, because this is what Bernie Sanders shared in his video. So I, I was thinking about, like, I began to watch his, his speech here in the Senate. And I was like, oh, I should use this, and I should use this. And, I, and it ended up being like, 
15 minutes of the speech. There's no point of me doing that. <laughs> Just go watch the speech. So I will link to his speech below the video if you want the full speech. It's a great speech. Really digs deep. But here are some of the facts that he brings up in his speech. And in fact, maybe if I go, um, how, how, how should I do this? If I do this, bring this over. There we go. Shrink this window. Uh, bring that back up here. There we go. So these are my notes. Give you a little window into how I, how I prep for uh, this show. <laughs> but this is some amazing stuff. So this is all stuff that Bernie mentioned, mentioned again in his speech. Over the past 25 years, the pharmaceutical industry has spent $8.5 billion on lobbying and $745 million on campaign contributions. In 2022 alone, the pharmaceutical industry hired 1,700 lobbyists. That's three lobbyists for every member of Congress. Just to give you an idea of the, the kind of power that this industry has over politicians. The pharmaceutical industry makes the highest profits of any industry. So from 2000 to 2018, they made over $8 trillion in profit. Profit. That is money that is being directly, essentially stolen from people. If, if these companies were publicly owned, you would not be having these profits. There, there wouldn't be profits. The, the money would be directly put into the actual research and development as opposed to these profits going to these executives and stock buybacks, which is another major piece of where a lot of this money from these big pharma giants actually go. They pretend, oh, we need all this money for research and development. Meanwhile, they actually spend more. That may be a point that I made here. If not, yeah, I did. Over the past decade, Big Pharma uh, spent $87 billion more on stock buybacks than on research and development. Completely blowing away the idea that, oh, we need all this money for research. When not only does the public fund a lot of the research into these medicines, but they're not even using most of their, their money for that. They're using it for, uh, you know, their own, uh, their yachts, their mansions. Where was I here? So uh, pharmaceutical, so I said that um, compensation packages for executives. So in 2021 alone, 50 pharma executives made $1.9 billion in compensation. That's in one year. And an extra, uh, they're going to make an extra $2.8 billion in golden parachutes once they leave their company. So their exit package is worth $2.8 billion. And I read that already. And also I mentioned this, this is near the end of his speech or somewhere near the, the last quarter, I think, where he brings up in the inventors of insulin, um, of other vaccines like the polio vaccine, and how none of them patented their product, their their discoveries, and instead decided to make it as easily accessible as possible. And in fact, the person that discovered insulin, which uh, I believe were Canadians from the University of Toronto, they uh, sold that patent for one dollar, one dollar, because they wanted to try, they wanted to ensure that it went to as many people as possible. And what happened then? Massive companies have since, uh, you know, taken up that and are now charging Americans 10 times more for insulin than what Canadians pay. It's a completely disgusting system. It should all be public. Health should not have to be decided on, it should be guaranteed to you. It shouldn't depend on how much you have in your bank account. And Bernie Sanders is one of the true fighters in the Senate, actually driving this point home and making some real changes with just his words alone.